Hey everyone, it's your buddy Graphic back with another video, and today we're going to be jumping into one of the hardest dungeons in the game, Garden of Genesis. So in today's video, like I said, we're going to be jumping into one of the hardest dungeons or expeditions in New World MMO. That's going to be Garden of Genesis. This is actually a level 60 dungeon where recommended three to five players, obviously recommended five players as we have a five stack here. Uh, we're going to be testing with some uneven builds, not the most special builds. However, do keep in mind that obviously every dungeon does have a weak against uh, really type. So in this case, I'm going to bring that graphic up here and it's going to show you that Garden of Genesis monster type is Angry Earth. Weak to fire, slash, and resist lightning and thrust. So keep that in mind. That's exactly why we have two fire staffs in this scenario doing insane, insane amounts of damage. And I do want to get to the actual gameplay, though, because there's a lot to regard in these boss fights. Here's actually the first boss. This boss is actually very, very tricky if you get hit by certain things. I'm going to kind of walk you guys through how to beat this boss without having any deaths. It's actually a fairly easy boss to understand, but with the most recent buffs that they actually had after the closed beta, a lot of people haven't fought against the new really insane damage and very, very tanky uh, really bosses in these level 60 expeditions. So here with this boss, you're going to be able to see that he has a bunch of different moves. So far, we're just pretty much autoing down. And this is how all bosses start in the, you know, level 60 zone. You're going to have a very easy start. But here you can actually see there is a little ring, right? That green ring. We actually come on the outside. We have two guys go on the outside. We're going to clear mobs while we'll those three on the inside, which is going to be your, make sure you have your healer on the inside with your tank as the, you know, two DPS me and the duelist in this case are going to go around the outside and kill these mobs. So we don't come outside of that circle and have a ton, a ton of mobs stacked up. So the outside job is actually going to be very, very simple as long as you have one or two people doing it. And you just kind of go up to these little uh, shining lights and you see three different mobs coming up. Very, very quick to take those out and move on to the next shining light. So here we have one over here, the duelist and I. As the middle, they don't have much of an issue, obviously, like I said, with life staff being how strong it is right now. And then also having the tank in there, they should have really no issue at all. And we see me and the duelist, like I said, just cleaning out or clearing out the, uh, you know, the mobs on the outside. So now we have the boss back outside of those little cages or the gate and we can go back in and fight. So he does have a kind of uh, a pull or a grab mechanic. It doesn't really pull you back in, but it does come out and, you know, do some massive damage as you saw, uh, as you saw one of our guys get hit there. We can also see, you know, he does have a lot of mobility. So he'll run around here and actually tunnel underground in a second. You'll see that. And you can actually hit him through the tunnel. So you'll see, I think it's going to start after this, uh, you know, the second gate. So here, this is the gate. I'm staying on the inside. I'm told to stay on the inside. The duelist is going to stay on the outside by himself this time around. So we're going to just try to do as much damage as possible. By the way, yes, there are mobs that spawn on the second gate too. So on the outside, there are mobs he's taken out. Um, but they're, you know, they're fairly weak mobs. Definitely when you're running a fire staff, you're going to be able to burst them pretty quickly. It's all about the boss. And you're also going to be able to see, you know, when the boss gains stamina, you're going to need to burst his stamina bar. And that's going to be by heavy attacking or using come, some kind of CC ability. I'm not sure it comes into play too much here, but you can actually see him also going underground. Um, so let's see if he... Okay, here I got hit by a very, very strong ability. Obviously, he picks up a bunch of mud and throws it at you, basically. Um, and, you know, there's a couple abilities you're going to find out that uh, you're going to want to dodge for sure. But like I said, there's going to be a stamina bar that you're going to need to heavy attack down. And that's one of the mechanics that uh, if you do not, he will actually five-man wipe you very, very quickly. So just keep that in mind. That's why I have my Warhammer secondary. Didn't use it in this case because we did have a lot of people doing those heavy attacks. But you can see him kind of burrowing underground here. It's very hard to hit him when he's underground. But it is possible. So here he actually does a lot of damage to me um, and continues with this little trail. And uh, like I said, you can hit him when he's underground in the water, but uh, it is pretty difficult to do so unless you're right above it. Um, and I think we do kill him right here in just a second as he goes back to the middle. And uh, finally, we do kill him and we get 144 coins or 144 gold. That's quite a bit of gold. You don't really usually get too much off boss pickups. You can see that some of the gear I got. I got a very, very cool great axe. Um, it's going to actually be the Blightbone Battle Axe. going to have a very, very strong purple tier 5, like I said, Battle Axe. Uh, it, it is 500 gear score, but that kind of can change. Obviously, it can go up to a legendary if you get up to 600 gear score on some of those items. Uh, here we have the final boss. So this is going to be the final boss of Garden of Genesis. If you guys have any questions, let me know, by the way, in the comments below. But he's going to, or this boss itself is going to start off with 
uh, a little, I don't know if you guys saw that kind of string there, but that string that was on Larson, it did create a little pool. If you see to the left, it has a little bit glowing on the ground. If I walk in there, I'll take kind of a diseased damage, uh, a very quick damage. You can also see these little balls rolling around so that she does summon those those don't do too too much or easy kind of kind of to stay away from and dodge however what you're going to notice here she does have an ability that can one shot if you are not in heavy armor so here actually i'm getting hit by that diseased um so you can see that disease to my right um but like i said there is a one shot ability mechanic i'll, sh I'll show you exactly when it does come it may have already come came up but i must have missed it um her melee autos attacks can do a lot of damage so you need to make sure you have a tank here we have that where she's, you know, hitting me with the disease. So once that uh, trigger is done, you can see I'm starting to take massive damage. Your healer's need, going to need to be on top of it. You saw her actually scream a second ago. And if you get hit by that scream, you are going to, like I said, pretty much die if you are not heavy armor. So this mechanic is a one-shot mechanic if uh, you do not not if you do not play it right. And the one thing you'll start to notice is a lot of this ground you cannot stand on now because I've been continued to get targeted by that even with taunts from our tank um, and another thing to realize is how much damage we're doing with double fire staff if we don't have double fire staff we're all not level 60 not 20 mastery not decent weapons we are going to have a very very hard time with this boss because of the amount of damage they do and then also the amount of abilities that uh, you know can just really mess you up and you can see that this boss also goes underground and uh, it continues to it seems like come after me with the abilities uh, here we have one of the rolling balls of poison again. Um, not too crazy, but there you see a new ability. So this one actually throws a rock on the ground based on where I'm basically at. It seems like, like I said, the boss is kind of targeting me with some of these abilities. Uh, we're going to see another rock coming down here in a second. Uh, we don't see it quite yet. Here we go. We have another, I believe, is that a rock? Yep, a rock. Hit me in the head. It doesn't do too much damage, thankfully, but you are going to need those rocks for an ability she does later on. So we're going to talk about that and how to utilize those rocks in just a second. You can also see that you know these screams and these auto attacks are killing people. So you actually saw somebody just go down from an auto attack, and you got to be very, very careful with, the, with, with that specifically. I think that was actually Sephir that fell down that time. Um, and, you know, we're running with all, like I said, content creators in the YouTube space for the most part. Some are Twitch as well. So, Seth actually got revived and instantly killed. So, very, very unfortunate as another rock falls on top of me. I'm pretty much in a rock formation over here in this corner. And the big, the big move is coming now. And you can see the floor is lit up pretty much everywhere. So, at this point, we're going to want to hide behind the rocks or you will pretty much die. And you saw Duke didn't make it back in time. He died to the explosion. That's another one-shot mechanic that is in this dungeon so you're gonna have to be careful of these one-shot mechanics they can wipe you very very quickly and you'll need to do many many runs if you cannot dodge them correctly so like i said this boss is also very very fun to actually play against because you actually do have that feeling of needing to outplay some of these things so we have another person bite the dust there it looks like the duelist actually did die we do get the revive off so he's alive for now uh, but you know like i said once you revive once it's all you get in the dungeon or not in the dungeon but all you get in the boss fight in the instanced area you saw her do her scream there so if anyone got hit by that you would die you can iframe everything by the way in this dungeon every single ability pretty much you can iframe it is very very hard definitely with the ping we were running on during this server um we had some rough ping but for the most part you're going to be able to see like i said some very very cool mechanics coming out of this boss uh, we are on an eu server that's why like i said that there, there is some difficulties when it came to ping and trying to iframe things and uh you know there we have another rock rocks are pretty much formation uh, or getting a formation all around as they continue to target me but like i said the rocks are not something you need to be scared of they don't do much damage but you are going to need to definitely like i said get behind them for the ability like you see here as we're all behind there i think we only have three people left by the way we have me larson and um, I can't really see who that third one is. I think it's the Duelist. So me, Larson, and the Duelist are the only ones left. We do not have our tank, and we do not have our healer for the rest of this, I believe. Or do we have our healer? Let's see here. The Duelist and Larson. I think Larson actually is going heals as well. So I think we had a, kind of a double healer combo here, and that's exactly why we were staying alive. I was going to say, we could not do this without a healer when it's only, you know, half the way dead. But we do have the double life staff, which is absolutely huge for damage. And, uh, you know, you saw most of the mechanics at this point. You haven't seen her really scream at me, thankfully, yet, because I'm still alive. If she screamed at me constantly, I probably would not be alive. It's very difficult to actually dodge all of those abilities. And since I am going medium armor, it would probably one-shot me there. So you can actually see, like I said, the duelist is doing a great job tanking. We have heals coming from the side, and I'm doing a lot of the damage from the side with the fire staff, definitely continuing to apply burns. 
And we are noticing that we are getting this a lot more this time around. So we are getting this one-shot mechanic a lot more. And I think that's due to us taking so much time to kill the boss. Because like I said, we only have three people out of our five left. And as, as the boss almost one-shot me there yet again. Um, and we're going to actually be able to do this 3v5. Or sorry, not 3v5, but with three people in a level 60 Garden of Genesis dungeon. So that's a very, very cool aspect of this. If you play it properly, you can still beat it with uh, you know a, a solid formation of you know a heals kind of a tank and also damage it is very very hard though if we tried to run this whole dungeon with three people if we started that fight with three people i do not think we would have probably been able to do it very easily um the new damage buffs the new you know tank buffs to some of these uh elite mobs or really not elite mobs but bosses in these dungeons is definitely a good thing it's making it hard it's making these mechanics hurt and it's making you definitely pay attention and i think you know here we had let yet again we are seeing that uh, you know one shot mechanic come into play there we go. We survived it. And the one-shot mechanic is actually very easy to dodge because, um, you know, really the scariest part, in my opinion, when it comes to this boss is going to be that scream. That scream is so hard to dodge, and it does so much damage. So there you see it actually one-shot me. Uh, and it's tough because sometimes the scream can start right on top of you. If you're on the opposite side of the scream, it's very easy to get, you know, to kind of dodge. But like I said, it's tough sometimes. And here you're actually going to be able to see that I am stuck on a revive, but people can't pick me up because I'm under that diseased ground, right? So you can see that diseased ground below me. Nobody's going to be able to pick me up because if they do, they'll probably get one shot. So in a little bit, hopefully that diseased ground goes away and they can actually pick me up, have the time to pick me up because it's going to be very hard for them to do enough damage as a tank slash healer. Um, and you can see him actually right now, I think they start to kind of try to make the push for me as the disease ground now just goes away for the first time. And uh, I get, I think, Larson to come over and pick me up. And now I'm up. And you have to be very careful not to die right away again because obviously you come back with about one-fourth HP. So it wouldn't take much to take me out for good. Uh, obviously, this is a mechanic in any dungeon, but uh, definitely specific with some of these higher level dungeons where they do this so, so much damage. Um, like I said, guys, this is pretty much all of it. I just wanted to kind of give you guys a run through of the boss. And there's some of the cool items we got, some of the cool gear that everybody's going to be farming late game. Fire staffs are unbelievably broken in uh, this dungeon. Not broken, but, you know, they're very, very strong. Just keep that in mind. So you're, if you're going to be looking for a DPS, a fire staff's not a bad option to ask for somebody to, you know, come and fire staff this boss specifically. I also think, you know, if you think about it, the more healers, the better, right? It may take a little bit longer, but you're watching this boss right now. It is taking a little bit to kill it since we have three people. However, having the double life staff was needed because one of our life staff users died and we are still able to beat the boss. So imagine how safe you are really with two boss or sorry, two healers and then maybe even running heavy armor just so you do not get one shot by that uh, scream ability this um, this boss does have. So it's just a cool, like I said, a very, very cool dungeon. I just wanted to show you guys the two bosses. There's not much more to this dungeon. Uh, I do have the other dungeon, Lazarus Instrumentality, the, ever, uh, the other level 60 dungeon. If you guys are interested, you guys can definitely check that video out as well. If you guys have not already, make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn notifications on. I really do appreciate really all the awesome support and hope you guys continue to show the awesome support. As uh, Like I said, I'll give you guys so much new guides tips, tricks, weapons. Uh, you know, we cover it all here on the channel. As you can see here, we got an, an Firebender. Firebender, by the way, has an opportunity to actually be 600 gear score and a legendary. So very, very cool drop. Thank you again for tuning in. I'll see you guys all in the next one.